The NWSL is back in action after a week off due to an international break. And there was games across the weekend with lots of high scoring competition. And it all started on Friday night. Welcome into HQ. I'm Lisa Roman alongside two former U.S. internationals, Lori Lindsay and Allie Wagner. Friday night was off to a hot start between Washington Spirit and North Carolina Courage. It was a rematch of the 2022 Challenge Cup final. Washington Spirit had welcomed back seven of their U.S. internationals, while North Carolina was happy to have a few of their internationals return, especially Mexican international Diana Ordonez. But they were still without Brazilian internationals, Dabinha and Caroline. This match ending in a 3-3 draw, both teams splitting points. Allie, is this the type of game you are expecting between these two sides? Absolutely. I mean, this matchup never disappoints. They always find the back of the net against each other, usually high scoring affairs. And this was no exception. You said it. And what was so entertaining about it is that this game went back and forth. First, Washington scored. North Carolina answered. And that was right before the end of the half. And Washington said, uh-uh, we're going to come back and equalize. So they're going into the break, sitting up 2-1. But this game ended up 3-3. Again, the, both teams responding. I think when you see both of these sides, the, the key element or, or what is so entertaining about them is how explosive they are offensively and, and maybe not as defensively structured as some managers would prefer. I love it. As a fan of the game, this is the matchup that I want to watch. I want to watch people taking risks. I, I mean, we saw it, a couple mistakes. You said that, you know, North Carolina, lucky to get Ordonia as you saw her goal. It was a great one, good movement in the box. But she had to make amends because she's dwelled on a ball that gave away the opportunity to Washington. That's what I saw out of both these sides. They're taking risks, but they're making some mistakes. And that was giving the opportunity to, to the other sides to capitalize. And, and I just thought it was a good moment for Rodman. This is a player that came out of the international break and did not get the minutes that I expected her to see. I mean, this is a player that I think Vlako Ananoski needs to invest time in. And she should have been getting a lot of quality minutes in that qualifying campaign. She did not. Well, she comes back into NWSL play and she steps up again. That's one of the key elements that for, for Vlaku Ananoski is performance in the NWSL to earn minutes on the U.S. national team. I think she's continuing to drive ahead, make a statement. She had two goals in this one and, and she's just so good at finishing. And that is sometimes something we saw through qualifying that U.S. team lacks. So good game, entertaining affair and, and important enough that some key players stepped up. Yeah, I mean, I completely agree with that in term with you, Al, in terms of just back and forth. This is what we've seen with the Washington North Carolina games this entire season. I think they played twenty times already. It feels like, um, but at the same time. Um, <laughs> I will add to that is Sanchez. You know, I think hoping to get even more minutes than she did, and she played quite a few in World Cup qualifying. So here's a player that also is feeding Rodman those types of balls um, into the into the attack. She's a player that wants to play with freedom, um, and I think she will be looking for that as the season goes on as well. But no doubt with these two teams, I think with scraping by trying to get points, talking with Chris Ward, the Washington Spirit coach, one thing that they are really looking to try to solidify going forward is shutouts because they've leaked some goals unnecessarily. And when you look at their they, um, this team shouldn't be giving up those types of um, goals, especially against the North Carolina team that I can, as you mentioned, Lisa, Dabinia, Caroline, not even in the starting lineup. So you had two young players in Ordonez, who no doubt has had a great season so far, but then also even more uh, momentum and confidence playing with the Mexican national team. But then Brittany Radcliffe, who hasn't had a ton of time. So uh, both teams will be looking to solidify things. And one of the teams that I'll be um, looking forward this coming weekend as well will be that North Carolina against Portland. So we'll see if North Carolina can lock it down defensively for a team that has been sound structurally defensively in previous seasons. Diana Ordonia is getting a brace in this match. Trinity Rodman also getting a brace in this match. But formationally, we saw a three back from Washington Spirit with Sam Staub, Kelly O'Hara, Amber Brooks in that back line. Ali, you talked about the freedom and the openness that both of these sides had. When you look at the formation change and putting a little bit more attacking presence higher up the field for Chris Ward's side, is that something that contributes to more of the goal scoring opportunities for Washington? You know, if you look at the way that they broke down their opposition, one was just in the counter press moment with Ardonia's dwelling on it. One was actually just quick vertical play, which we would expect out of this side. They they bypassed the pressure of North Carolina. They changed it. They got down Rodman's side with Ashley Sanchez releasing her. You know, so no, I think I actually think he shifted to that three back system to try to solidify them defensively. Even though Kelly O'Hare is not a, a, a traditional center back, 
I think that was the intention there is to give them there's some more solidity behind the ball because as soon as you release the ball to those game changers, and they have plenty of them on Washington, Trinity Rodman, Ashley Sanchez, as you guys both mentioned, you know, this is this is a these are players that can win a game for you in one moment. These are players that can make something out of nothing. So if as you said, Laura, if they can focus on on a structure behind the ball that then highlights some of these key players for them in the attack, I think they're in a better position to gobble up points and move up the table. I think that's what we all expect is that both these sides or go, are going to go on a run at some point, but they've got to get it right in the back. So I think, no, I think they were trying to lock it down defensively more so than, than really uh, liberate some of those attackers. Because let's, let's face it, Rodman, Ashley Sanchez, they're liberated already. Those players don't want to be in structure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, and we could talk about formations all day, right? Like, I mean, at, at some point in time, it doesn't really matter as long as you understand the philosophy and the principles at play, right? And where you're trying to exploit space against the opposition. And to your point, Ali, I actually think that they knew that w there's no surprise that North Carolina plays with the box. They're going to only have two strikers up top. They're two young strikers and they're going to chase. That's what they do. They're going to work hard. They're going to chase. So can you have three behind the ball in terms of being able to play out, but then have more players in advanced positions earlier? on and we saw that to some extent at the same time though what are those decisions you're making once you're off the ball or once the ball's turned over and those are the areas that they're going to have to clean up especially with these last handful of games or this month of august i should say is going to be critical for the washington spirit in particular to gain points to make sure they're not giving up goals they have to win their games and start to make um up some ground to get into the playoff position <laughs> and for you to be august right your prediction Right? You got them, you've got them in the finals, so they need to gavel up some points to get at the top of the table, Laura. They do. I mean, Owen Rain, look, they're taking care of their business. Washington Spirit, I need them to get on the hustle bus. Let's go. We need some points. <laughs> That's exactly what we need from Washington. This was their eighth tie throughout this regular season. And the two sides, North Carolina, Washington, it's always a fun battle, but that's it for the regular season between these two sides. They end up splitting the point. Washington jumps up just one spot. They're now 10th in the NWSL standings, and North Carolina anchors the league at the bottom of the table with just nine points. We'll have to see if these two teams face again in the playoffs, maybe even another final rematch in the NWSL challenge or regular season final. Ali Laurie, thank you so much for recapping this exciting goal-filled game. Both Washington and North Carolina are back in action next weekend. You can watch those games on Paramount Plus and CBS Sports. For more in the NWSL, you can download, follow, and subscribe to Attacking Third anywhere that you get your podcasts.